Hey everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Supply Chain, your go-to source for what's next, what's now, and what's breaking the rules in supply chain. Today, we're diving into something that's been stirring up boardrooms and backrooms alike, technology, AI, and automation. Is it revolution or is it overreaction? Is it magic or is it mayhem? Well, I asked some of the boldest voices in the industry to weigh in with real stories, strong opinions, and even a few tech fails And their answers are not going to disappoint. So let's get into it. Welcome, Juana, Keith, and Gorav to the show. Can each of you tell me who you are and what you do? Juana, we're going to start with you. Sure. Hey, I'm Juana. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Lumina. We're basically building a Lego brick system for supply chains. So instead of locking supply chain teams into a rigid solution, we give you the building blocks to build your own uh, supply chain management platform. Awesome. Welcome. Next up is Keith. Keith, tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, my name is Keith Moore. I'm the CEO of Auto Scheduler AI. Uh, our platform is focused on harmonizing data from all sorts of different sources in distribution and plant operations, so very logistics heavy. Harmonize that data, do a bunch of advanced mathematics on top of that data, and build out the who, what, when, and where of a facility. So who is doing what work, when are they doing it, where are they doing it, and how do we communicate that back and automate it within the existing systems? Awesome. All important questions. And last but absolutely not least is Gaurav. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi, everybody. Gaurav Kandewa, founder and CEO of Velostix. We are reimagining dock and yard management with AI agents. And we go live in one day. Awesome. I love that. One day. Wow. Okay. Let's get into the conversation. And for anybody who doesn't know, Sarah Barnes Humphrey, founder and host of Let's Talk Supply Chain. All right. Our first question is, what's the boldest way you've seen AI shake up the supply chain in the past year? And did it work? Keith, I'm going to start with you. Yeah. So uh, there's been some really good research, particularly on this uh, this topic. And so one of the things I want to highlight is there was a uh, paper that was published by Harvard Business Review about where AI is actually impactful in supply chain. And what it found is that we are very siloed and, and kind of set with our systems of record with ERP, TMS, WMS, YMS. There's all these systems that people are used to using where AI is extremely impactful on top of that is as a layered decision-making or orchestration layer. So can we take all of these systems that actually control the execution of our supply chain? And then can we leverage that uh, data to actually make those decisions in an automated or semi-automated way? So a few examples of where this has really been impactful um, is you're seeing companies like the Forkites of the world uh, that are using that for automating a lot of the transportation communication that might exist. Companies like PepsiCo, Frito-Lay, are actually automating a lot of the decision making inside of their plants and warehouses on, you know, what uh, what is each uh, execution system, whether it's an ASRS or an AGB, what is it actually doing and when is it doing it? Uh, and so you're seeing these systems layer on top of what's already there to provide context and optimize decision making without r- ripping and replacing it. Hmm, that's so interesting. I was talking to somebody the other day that said we need to de- decouple the supply chain in order for us to have an autonomous future. Now I'm going to leave that hanging there. And Hawana, I want to bring you up to the stage and ask you, what's the boldest way you've seen AI shake up the supply chain? Yeah, I think for me, the most exciting and boldest part is just putting more sophisticated tools in in the hands of operators. Like if you think about it, a couple of years ago, you had to rely on raising a ticket with an IT team to build anything and wait months for that to come through. Whereas now you've got you know, demand planners, buyers, merchandisers using ChatGPT to write Excel formulas, to write automated scripts, maybe like a little app, um, like a little scrappy app that reads, you know, PDFs and pushes them into into ERPs as orders. And all of this is just, for me, really exciting because it puts a lot of power into the hands of operators and stops kind of forcing them to wait for a system to be built for them. They can just take it in their own hands. And I think that's super cool. Yeah, I think that's super cool, too. As long as they're not giving away competitive secrets on chat GPT, I'm just going to say that because I think too many people might have gotten in trouble for that already. All right, Gaurav, which old school supply chain trick do you still secretly trust to beat even the smartest AI, at least for now? I know for me, it's writing out lists on a piece of paper. I know I'm dating myself and I'm so sorry and I'm probably going to get a lot of booze. But Gaurav, what do you think? 
You know, I'll just give an example of what I'm seeing in the market. Uh, so, you know, we have appointment scheduling portals. We now have voice AI where carriers can call in and talk to an agent and book an appointment. But what I see still happening is that drivers know that and they know they have an appointment. If they show up early, they won't get loaded. So they just don't do it. They won't use AI. They won't use the inbound call. They won't use the web portal. And they'll just show up and be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I didn't know I needed an appointment. I'm already here. Could you please load me now? And facilities still do it. So I think it's just a matter of time before they start getting caught and being told that, nope, we called you. You can't just show up and expect to get loaded by the way. Well, we just called them out here on this news show. And so hopefully with, people are going to make changes to make sure that that's not happening anymore. Well, now I want to get into story time because I want to know if there's a moment where automation completely saved the day or hilariously missed the mark. So I want to hear from each one of you. What does that mean to you? Juana, I'm going to start with you and then we'll go to Keith. Yeah, um, this one is a recent story. So actually, we had a support request from last week from one of our users who um, basically used Lumina AI to run, run a report. So she put in, give me a sales mix report by supplier for the UK. And obviously, it did its thing. It crunched the numbers and produced a beautiful report. But then the planner asked, OK, great. Now do the same for the US. And the model just refused. As in, it usually handles follow, follow-ups really well. Like if anyone's used ChatGPT, you know that you can ask a follow-up question and it does fine. But in this case, we looked into it and it wasn't a data issue. It wasn't a logic bug. Um, like basically the model just got lazy. That That's all it was. So now we're jo- joking that you shouldn't ask questions on a Monday morning on a fr- or a Friday afternoon, just in case it's not in the mood to answer it. Talk about a facepalm moment. I love that story. Even AI and robotics need some time on a Monday morning to have their coffee and get ramped up. All right, Keith, over to you. Yeah, I, the the stories of failure are always more fun. And so like when you're thinking about warehousing and plants, you're you're talking about a system of systems at these points. They've gotten much more complex. Most companies are working to automate some of the process flows by using machinery, right? So can we actually automate flows inside of our distribution uh, facilities? So five years ago or so, that became very prevalent where people were investing a huge amount of money to do that. Uh, There was a client that we were working with and they invested in, I mean, it was tens of millions of dollars automating their whole distribution center. So automated layer pick, automated case pick, AGVs everywhere, ASRS. The only thing people did in the operation was load and unload trucks. Wow. And so they they invested all of this money in a facility that was uh, Greenfield. And when we went to the site, we're like, this is really impressive. What is your throughput versus what it was beforehand? And they're like, well, we're only at 50% throughput. And part of the issue is you spend all these times on these systems that are potentially you know, going to double your throughput and give you much more consistency, but you don't think about there are bottlenecks if you're you're chaining processes together. And it's, it's the Herbie effect, right? Theory of constraints. Whatever your slowest process is in your bottleneck, that's going to be the thing that dictates the speed of your whole distribution operation. Yeah. And so key point there is that you need to start at that process, not at everything all at once. Because can you imagine getting to the end of that and you know your throughput is only at 50% where you were expecting maybe 80% and now you got to go back and dive in and figure out where that went wrong. Thank you, Keith. All right, Gaurav. What's your story? Tell us. Yeah, we had this really interesting thing where you know customers usually obviously don't like inventory sitting in their warehouse. You know, so we work with some customers that have inventory sitting in there for for weeks and they hadn't been scheduled for customer pickup. So either the customer wasn't getting the email or brokers weren't calling them or something was going on. So we put in place this agentic solution where the voice agent could now call and email the customer to make sure that they booked that appointment. In fact, they booked the appointment for them and let them know, hey, this is the time you can come and pick up. So that took care of a big problem. So we had customers showing up to pick up on time. It got so good that we had carriers showing up before the product hit the warehouse. They were still in the manufacturing process before it hit the warehouse, trucks were outside the door. And so we got too good at it. So we had to make some changes to make sure that we could integrate with a source system so that we could flag it and say, hey, don't show up before it hits the warehouse. (laughs) That's such a great story. So you had the opposite problem. You like increased efficiency by 120% so much that the product wasn't even there to be picked up. (laughs) 
I love that. And thank you so much for sharing all of those great stories. Now, go, Rav. I want to ask you one more question before we get to the end. So if you could automate one task in your customer's supply chain that drives your team up the wall, what would it be with that extra time? Or have they told you what they're doing with that extra time? You know, one of the biggest problems they have is around bill of lading and proof of delivery. They want to know that the product hit the customer's shelves and got to the customer. And so oftentimes they're checking in with us and say, hey, did this truck pick up? Did this truck deliver? So the one thing that would change it completely for them is if we were able to find a way to communicate to the shipper that your stuff was delivered on time and in full uh, at a customer. I can tell you being in logistics, I was in logistics for 20 years and those were the bane of my existence. I think it took me two to three weeks in some instances to be able to get that. So I'm glad that it's down to a couple of minutes or maybe even an hour now because it would have saved me so much time and I could have done so much more with that. All right, Keith, what's one tech trend in supply chain everyone's obsessing over, but you think is a little bit overhyped and why? The, the easiest answer would be artificial intelligence and agentic AI right now. I don't think it's overhyped. I think the hype is too fast, too soon um, in, in that it, like you look at the power of, of what large language models are going to bring to supply chain and what agents are able to do even today in supply chain is going to fundamentally transform how we operate as businesses and as shippers, so I actually don't think it's overhyped. I think it's just a little early. Um, something that is very overhyped and it, I find is not that valuable is the concept of digital twins. Everybody wants them for their network and their supply chain. They, they invest a huge amount of time and money to build them. And then the value they're able to actually extract from them is minimal because it is extremely complex and hard to model a very complex system of a supply chain accurately enough to be valued. Mm, and maybe that's way before it's time too. But I do agree with you. AI is running way faster than any of us really want it to. And so I appreciate that answer. All right, Juana, if you had to explain the value of digital transformation and supply chain to a 10-year-old, how would you do it? And give me a fun analogy. Yeah, I had to think hard about this one. It's a good question. I think, imagine that you're making a birthday card from scratch for your best friend. It's her birthday tomorrow. but you have you don't know where your crayons are you don't know where the paper is and you've run out of scissors there's no scissors in the house and the shop is closed for the weekend so imagine like the stress and you don't know what she wants what she likes what colors she wants now imagine another world where you have a perfect art room in your house where you know where the paper is where the crayons are you know there's little notes with the the her favorite colors and shapes um and maybe even some instructions on how to make a really nice birthday card so I think digital transformation and AI is kind of bringing this element to supply chain of instead of the stress and the chaos of not knowing where everything is to a really beautifully crafted space where you don't have to focus on where, where everything is, but rather on what you want to make. I love that. I was also thinking about this question. And so I came up with, imagine your warehouse is a video game or your ERP system is a superpower, right? I think that if we can get creative and have fun with what we're doing every single day, I just think that it's going to make not only supply chains, but digital transformations that much more fun. All right. What's one thing that each one of you would like the audience walking away from this thinking about AI and maybe the future of supply chain. Gaurav, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, it's great. You know, I think the simplest way to think about this is think about the highest frequency and the most single threaded use case, the same thing that you do every single day over and over again that takes up so much of your time. So when you think about AI, don't try to solve like some massive problem that's going to take years to execute pick the simplest one that you struggle with every single day and go solve it. And take action. All right, Keith, what, what's your one thing? Uh, mine is all about process mapping your data. So everybody says, I need great data in order to feed AI models so that I can drive value. And this is true, but it's more true to understand to Gaurav's point, right? You need to find these small wins. When you look at these processes that exist inside of your supply chain today, how do they exist based on the foundational data that you already have available? 
on. If you can map the data that you have to the processes and decisions that you actually make, which is something most organizations don't do, that's when you're actually able to take advantage of artificial intelligence and start to automate processes. Awesome. Love that. Last but absolutely not least, Juana, what do you think? One thing. I think similar theme. If any vendor you hear um, tells you they've got a magic box that will run your supply chain for you, I would run in the opposite direction. <laughs> because I think you should start small, pick one like very painful data entry task and try and automate that with ChatGPT or something else. And, you know, build like slowly, basically baby steps before you can run and build up those practical wins instead of trying to find some sort of magical autonomous agent that runs everything. Awesome. Well, that's a wrap on today's trending now statement or segment. And what a ride it was from old school tricks that still work to AI moments that almost broke the internet. One thing is clear. The future of supply chain isn't just about tech. It's about people who know how to use it. If you've got your own story of tech triumph or a trend you're tired of, DM us or drop it in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe, share and stay tuned for more bold takes on the future of supply chain. My name is Sarah Barnes-Humphrey, and I'll see you next time on Let's Talk Supply Chain. Thanks, everyone.